My name is Christine Casiba and I sculpt primarily wildlife out of stoneware clay. I've always been attracted to clay and, and sculpting and, um, and I sort of, it just kind of happened organically. I was teaching at a psychoed center with students with behavioral problems and, and emotional difficulties and I found an old kiln and a kick wheel back in the storage closet and I asked my director if I could use it and it, so I dragged it into my classroom and it was an amazing t tool to use with my students. It was very healing and also allowed them to be creative and express themselves. And then just organically from there, um, I just started doing it until it became something that I did professionally. Uh, my style and process uh, as an artist is, is pretty loose. I mean, I have done, when I first started, I really focused on being technical with my work and I used the calipers and the ruler and, and I was trying to go for uh, you know, more realistic, and, and I think that was a good exercise. I think it allowed me to grow and to develop those skills, but now I find that I really um, am drawn to working more impressionistically and stylized. I work very quickly. I like the gesture, and really with my animals, um, and even with my, my human figurative pieces, I, I really like trying to achieve the energy more so than going for the um, complete realism. Um, what I like about this, my style personally is it just suits me. It's, it's loose, it's forgiving, it's, uh, it, it evolves and it kind of informs me as I'm going along where it wants to go. Thinking about where I get my inspiration, um, I would say from the natural world. I mean, I'm really constantly drawn to and inspired by the beauty of, of just the wilderness and all things wild, including the things that are wild within us that we kind of become detached from. So I tend to gravitate towards certain animals and, and they find their way into my studio, although nothing is off limits and I've sculpted all you know kinds of things, but one animal that finds its way into the studio a lot is the raven or the crow. Um, I have a fascination with these birds and I always have. It kind of, the love affair really started back in the early 90s. Um, I lived out on the Navajo reservation and I was teaching and that was when I really found out about or, and really discovered the indigenous, the native people's connection with the raven and you know and it's it's a powerful one and if you look at most indigenous people around the world the raven has been a muse from the beginning of time. Um, they are the, you know, they are the messenger from the spirit world, and depending upon, depending upon which culture you're looking at, you know, sometimes it's more negative, like you know, they may foretell death, and sometimes it's more positive. Um, but they're always a powerful muse, and they're always compelling. Um, when we lived out on the reservation, we would go hiking out into the beautiful canyon lands. And these big western ravens would come with us and and they're so smart and you know they would follow us and talk to us and we would watch their antics and i was really mesmerized and then before my daughter was born i did a lot of animal rehabilitation where i would keep animals and nurse them back to health and and you know and i did not have a federal permit to keep birds but some of my friends did and when you would take some of these captive birds that couldn't be released for various reasons like they had been injured or they were, uh, they had been handled at an early age and you know, were not able to survive in the wild. There are different reasons that animals are kept for educational purposes with a federal permit. fascinating to hear people's stories about you know when they grew up and they had a pet crow or that they'd been to the Tower of London and they saw the ravens there or um, how things would go missing from you know their homestead and then they would find this cache where uh, where the crows had collected and and that's something that I think is so fascinating um, the fact that they collect things and the reason they do that is not for survival or mating they do it because they just want it 
and that's really funny to me because it's very much like we are and I think that's why they're so compelling to us because when I sculpt a hare or a horse or a bear you know it's pretty much got mass appeal you can't go wrong and and they're all beautiful animals and they're all very special in their own right but when you when I sculpt ravens I, I immediately see that they resonate with people or people really don't like them and I think again it's because they're complicated they're messy they're opportunistic they'll eat somebody's eggs if given the chance they'll also eat carrion if that's what's available but they're also beautiful and they're smart and they're family oriented and they play and they're highly intelligent so I think we see a lot of ourselves in them and that's a good thing and sometimes perceived as a bad thing. Being an artist is, has been a wonderful journey. I feel like it's allowed me to have this venue to express myself, to create what I love and to find um, people who, when my artwork resonates with someone, then obviously there's you know an immediate connection and uh, and I think that I found an amazing community within that world um, and I just feel really fortunate to be able to be doing what I love. <laughs>